uh, welcome back we will continue our uh, discussion about uh, channel channel coding theorem for awgm channel so let me just recall what is our model so we have input uh, it is in discrete time so we call it xk this is the input to the channel this input gets corrupted by additive noise nk and what we receive at the output is yk okay so we can write uh, yk is uh, xk plus nk okay so let me uh, remind you that actually input process is continuous in time it is x of t noise is also continuous in time it is n of t <coughs> but we are sampling it okay and we assume that this input is band limited it is a bandwidth b hertz so and and to sample it enough so that you know uh, we are able to recover it we need two b samples per second this is a sam minimum sampling rate per second okay so in time period t how many total samples we can have 2b times t this will be denoted by k so if we are communicating for a time period t then the number of samples is 2b t so we can write then this k is equal to 1 2 up to capital k where capital k is 2b t and uh, this noise n k first of all it is additive and we assume that it is white white means that its power spectral density what is power spectral density it is power per frequency that is in simple words i can say so if you see the plot of power spectral density of this noise it is constant okay now since we are working we are working in a band bandwidth of b hertz so uh, on this scale is b and minus b so this is uh, the power spectral density of this noise okay let this height be n naught by 2 where n naught is some constant so this is 2b so the total average power will be n naught by 2 times 2b which is n naught b okay and we know that if we see the noise nk we assume its distribution to be gaussian and we assume its mean to be zero and variance sigma square variance of this noise is simply expected value of nk minus mu square now since mu is 0 so it is expected value of nk square but if you see expected value of nk square is also the average power which is n naught b and this is same as variance so sigma square sigma square is equal to n naught b this is another observation now uh, we have input xk output yk yk is also random but mind it see xk is discrete time signal but takes continuous values this is very important xk can take any value it is not it can take only it is discrete in time that is defined at particular time but it can take any value similarly is nk discrete time but can take any value yk also so they are all continuous random variables and how much information yk contains about xk that is defined by mutual information okay and we also have in previous class defined this thing so i will again write it. it's called information capacity information 
capacity it is defined as the maximum value of of mutual information maximum value of mutual information between the input input the channel that is xk and the channel output yk and with respect to what over all the distributions of xk it will be clear <coughs> so it means that you have this i of xk yk you want your rate see this is information capacity is related to the rate it's actually maximum value of the rate data rate we can say so you want it to be as max as possible but what is in your control is just input distribution fxk of x so you want to maximize it with respect to the input distribution and this is denoted by the C. This is the definition of channel capacity. Now we have a constraint such that subject to constraint. What constraint we have? That the average power of input symbol, which is expected value of xa square, it cannot exceed some fixed value p. Practically, it means that your batteries are finite, right? You are using batteries or you are using any energy source. You have a finite energy source, you cannot have infinite energy. So at most what can you take is if you want to utilize maximum energy you can at most take expected value of x square equal to p okay so this is the best you can do but you cannot pick up a power average power more than p you are allowed because you have finite batteries so now uh, let's go step by step so we use definition of i of x k y k right we can write it as differential entropy of y k minus differential entropy of so i warn here to those students who haven't revised it whatever i have taught till now it will be painful for them go back to the video lectures revise the definition of entropy conditional entropy differential entropy again okay if you don't then these lectures will be painful now <coughs> what will be let's compute one by one so yk is xk plus nk now you are computing uh, differential entropy of yk given xk right so this quantity has an operational meaning that suppose someone tells you what xk was okay what was transmitted someone tells you that is what it means by given xk so when someone tells you what xk was uh, so there is no uncertainty left about xk now in yk you have two terms xk and nk which are both random but if someone discloses what is xk, xk does not remain random at all. Now the whole randomness uncertainty is only because of nk. So h of yk given xk can be written as h of nk. Okay. Because conditioned on xk, someone tells you what xk is. Some genie tells you what xk is. So there is no uncertainty left about xk. Now in yk, the only uncertainty left is because of nk, the noise. So this is differential entropy of noise. And you know this noise we have assumed is Gaussian zero mean variance sigma square, right? And we have derived in last class the differential entropy for Gaussian random variable is half log the base 2 2 pi e sigma square right now we are left with another quantity so this is step number one step number two 
we are left with h of y k h of y k is h of x k plus n k correct now you want to maximize you want to maximize the mutual information to find the channel capacity the maximum rate for this you need to maximize this h of y k minus h of y k given x k and you want to maximize it with respect to the input distributions right now this is maximum value of h of y k with respect to input distributions minus the second term is constant it is half log to the base 2 2 pi e sigma square because this is simply h of n k okay so now to maximize the mutual information you need to maximize the entropy of y k you need to find the maximum value of this right now here are the facts we have done one important result the max this and differential entropy is maximized when yk is gaussian right we have done it when yk has gaussian distribution now yk is equal to xk plus nk so nk is gaussian for uh, see we need y for maximizing h of yk we need yk to be gaussian nk is gaussian the only way yk will be gaussian is xk should also be gaussian only. okay and see we are maximizing with respect to the distribution on x and what it says is h entropy of yk will be maximized only when distribution of xk is gaussian okay now comes the question of what should be the variance of this you see variance now you are choosing x k to be gaussian so mean you can always assume zero mean has no meaning so mean is just an arbitrary thing now what will be its variance it will be expected value of x k square but we know that we have a constraint on the average power which, which is same as expected value x square that should be equal to p so variance of this input should be chosen as p or in other words x k which is normally distributed zero mean p variance will maximize this entropy hence will maximize the mutual information okay so maximum value of h of y k which is same as maximum value of h of x k plus n k this happens when <coughs> both when x k is gaussian and the value will be half log 2 pi e now it will be variance of xk plus nk we have derived that for a gaussian random variable the differential entropy is half log 2 pi e variance of that now here we have sum of two gaussian random variables and sum of the variance which will be half log to the base 2 2 pi e variance of xk is p variance of n is sigma square okay so hence maximum value of mutual information with respect to input distributions is half log to the base 2 2 pi e p plus sigma square minus half log to the base 2 2 pi e sigma square which is half log to the base 2 1 plus p by sigma square
okay so this is the famous you know uh, channel coding theorem and we call the unit as bits per channel use what does channel use means basically you are <laughs> for every you know information bit you are transmitting multiple uh, code words code word bits so every time when we transmit one bit we call it one channel use we, we transmit two bits we call it two channel use three bits we call three channel use okay so this is what means now how many times is channel is used so channel is used for transmission of k samples of the process x of t we we uh, told you initially that we are basically sampling it and uh, and for how much time for t seconds okay so we can say that information capacity per unit time is actually k by t number of samples per divided by total number of time which is 2 bt by t okay hence the overall capacity will be 2 bt by t times half log 1 plus p over sigma square which is b log to the base 2 1 plus p and sigma square is n not b this also we have already shown and now the units will be bits per second so capacity is b log to the base 2 1 over p by n not b this is the famous celebrated information capacity law information capacity it means that for a signal operating in a bandwidth b with a power constraint p the maximum rate at which you can transmit the information is given by this c b log of 2 1 plus p by n not b okay is very uh, remarkable result so uh, i will keep this uh, lecture this much short give some time to it try to understand the steps and next part of the lecture we will try to understand some of the operational meanings uh, of these terms what capacity means and this will motivate us our further study of other uh, techniques in digital communication